the lukewarm. Don't let the comfortable. Don't let those that just occupy church pew somewhere to put your fire out. Don't let yourself be separated from the love of God. I believe this. Bring people together with God and bring God's people together with each other. <laughs> and you have a recipe for an explosion of Holy Ghost proportions. Its code name was called Operation Dynamo. Everybody's heard in World War II of Hitler's uh, strategy that proved to be quite successful called the Blitzkrieg. The Blitzkrieg was simply this, to move so fast and to hit with such force that the countries that they invaded, practically by the time they realized what was happened to them, it was too late and they would just fall like dom dominoes one after another. And so in this particular case, uh, the British had lost about 62,000 soldiers the Battle of Dunkirk. 230 French soldiers had already perished and 300,000 British soldiers were trapped against the ocean. They had nowhere to go and all Hitler had to do was drive in on them and capture them all or mow them down or whatever. And for whatever reason, Hitler hesitated, though his general told him, we need to take those 300,000 British men captive and then invade Britain because they'll be powerless to defend themselves. Well, while he hesitated, someone else made their move. And it was then that uh, this lowly, overlooked politician by the name of Churchill, now in the time of crisis, raised to a position of power, seized the day. And he developed a plan, and it was called uh, Operation Dynamo. What was Operation Dynamo? Get those British soldiers trapped at Dunkirk back to Britain by way of sea. They had few naval vessels. So what did he do? He enlisted the efforts of fishermen and the yachts of the nobility. And anything and everything that could float, he commissioned everybody on the British island to man their boats, tugboats, fishing boats, row boats, motor boats, yachts, it didn't matter, and sailed to Dunkirk. And they expected that they could rescue maybe 45,000 soldiers. They ended up rescuing all 300,000 of them, and it changed the pitch of the war, and it breathed new life into them. Oh, let me tell you something. I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of the devil coming in here and mowing down our new converts. I'm making an appeal to the Pentecostals of Greensboro. Let's stand side by side, shoulder to shoulder, inseparable in our faith and commitment to apostolic revival, and let's rescue as many foundering lost souls as we can till Jesus comes. I believe it. If we'll stick together, amen, hell will fall apart. I said if we'll stick together, hell will fall apart. Oh, put your hands together and praise him. Hallelujah. And so Paul speaks of being more than a conqueror. Remember who his audience is here. He's talking to the people, the saints that are called of God that are at Rome. He's addressing people who well understood Roman culture and Roman history because they were Romans. He's talking to the people who conquered the world. We talk about our worries about China becoming the next world power. Probably 20 or 30 years ago, when we thought of Bible prophecy, we thought of maybe China becoming a military opponent. Comes to find out if China conquers, it's not going to conquer militarily. It's going to conquer economically. So we're living in the days of a different kind of economy. But in the days of the Roman Empire, you know what a nation did to get rich? 
just invaded another nation and took everything they had. It was literally legalized robbery. It was just banditry. You just overpowered your neighbor nation. You took their assets. You took their talent. You overwhelmed them. And in the case of Rome, they would put back sometimes petty leaders for their own people back in power, but control them and tax them, right? That's how they got rich. Nations don't get rich like that anymore. Nobody wants really to conquer another nation because it's a big liability. Today we get rich by making things, right? By coming up with new ideas. Back then, they did it by just conquering. So to the west, all the way to the Atlantic Ocean, to Spain, Rome conquered. To the south, all the way to North Africa, Rome controlled. To the north, all the way to what we call Germany and the British Islands, Rome controlled. Rome was everything, everywhere. Rome was the all-powerful. And to the people whose entire history had to deal with subjugation, conquering, triumphing over other nations and other peoples, Paul says, I want you all to know something. We are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. He uses a term that supersedes the term for conquerors. It really means super conquerors. We're the conquerors of the conquerors. Hallelujah. Uh, let me tell you, there isn't a nation strong enough that can resist uh, the message of Jesus Christ. There isn't a power. Come on. The communist regimes tried to do it. They tried to block religion and Christianity in the Bible for 70 years. Uh, but ultimately, amen, when the wall came down in the USSR, they said when missionaries would go with handfuls of Bibles, the people would grab the Bibles out of their hand. Uh, we've, been a, we've been denied this for so long. We want to read what's in this book. Woo! Oh, I love this. And so this city, what would happen is, when a when a when a when a when a um, uh, one of the great leaders of the Roman legion would go out, they would conquer a territory. They would bring back the spoils of their war, and they would bring back the leaders of the conquered nation. They would chain them to their wheels of their chariots. They would make a parade. Something called a triumphal arch would be built, and there would be these massive celebrations. And everybody knows the story of, of, um, um, of Cleopatra and how she allowed herself to be bitten by a poisonous snake. The reason for that was she refused to come back to Rome to be put on display as a spoil of war. So rather than to subjugate herself, she took her life. All of us know the prophecy of Jesus. He said, not one stone of this temple will be left upon another. And within a generation's time, Titus came, sacked the city of Jerusalem, plundered the temple, burned it with fire. Historians said the gold from the temple melted and leaked into the crevices of the stone so that the people that came to pillage literally tore the blocks apart hunting gold that had melted, melted into the crevices. When Titus came back to Rome, they had built an arch and engraved on the left side of the arch was artwork. And this is the only picture ever made of the candlestick that was in the temple, the table of showbread, and some of the art other artifacts that they found. The only picture ever designed from the actual things was there decorating that arch. Let me tell you why Paul said we, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You see, some people wonder, why did God allow a devil to be the devil in the first place? I'll tell you why, so we'd have something to celebrate. I'll tell you why, because we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And when hell throws everything he has at us, height, depth, Life, death, any other created thing. We triumph over the forces of the devil. 
And every time we gather in the house of God, there's another opportunity to celebrate hell's defeat and the triumph of the church of the living God. You are here today, not because of your own power, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ and because of the power of the word of God and because of faith in him and because of the purpose and the plan of Jesus Christ. Don't ever forget it. We are conquerors because nothing can separate us. If something were able to separate you from Jesus, you wouldn't last a day. Point number one, remember this. Nothing can get between you and Jesus if you don't want it to. Point number two, you're a conqueror this morning because if God be for us. Oh, somebody needs to realize you got somebody on your side. I hope you don't think that being stuck to Jesus is a burden. Uh, it's an asset beyond all assets. Uh, because if God is for you, uh, who can be against you? About 20 years ago, O.J. got in trouble and enlisted the efforts of the dream team. Let's see, who was it? Shapiro and Bailey and Kardashian and one other, Cochran. Four guys, some of the brightest, most popular, most powerful, most brilliant attorneys on planet Earth. And they called themselves the Dream Team. And they were his advocates. And it was their business to get into OJ's business and to come between him and the courts of law. Well, out of the four members of the original Dream Team, two of them have died in 20 years' time. And at this rate, amen, they're all going to be gone before it's all over. But the beauty of this advocate that I preach to you, <sighs> he doesn't diminish with time. He doesn't need any extra help. He's not getting older. He shows no effect of age. Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He was with you when you got started. He's with you now. And he'll be with you on your dying day. Aren't you glad that God is for you? Come on, all confusion. You don't have to be confused. God is on your side. Remember, when stuff doesn't happen the way you want it to, what the devil tries to convince you of is that God doesn't see your need and God doesn't care and God's not there. He's there. So then, remember this as the musicians come. Nothing can separate us. God is for us, and God has predestined the church to victory. Now, when we say God has predestined the church, we're not saying he predestines the individuals. He predestined the cause to triumph. Most people that start a company, and if the company becomes great, there's no way they could have actually forecasted or guaranteed. Who could have guaranteed that Apple would be what it is? Right? It was a renegade for so many years. It was a, it was a misfit. But now, it's gained purchase. It has a world presence. The founding fathers of this country couldn't have guaranteed that the experiment of liberty and democracy would have proven to be what it has become. Tell you why you, when you're fused, you're not confused because it's, it's different about the church. You see, the first pronouncement of the of the predestination of the victory of the church was in Genesis chapter three sixteen, when God told the devil, "The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent." You get that? Victory's coming. And I look in the book of Revelation, and from every tribe, and from every kindred. And from every people, and from every tongue, and from every nation, 
They're gathered around the throne. Even before it's happened, it's already happened in Bible prophecy because God has already declared this cause will not fail. Do you hear me? This cause will not fail. Our businesses may fail. Our health may fail. Our dreams may fail. Our hopes may fail. But the church. Let me tell you why we're more than conquerors. Because we can enjoy the victory in advance. We can look in the back of the book. And we can say, I win. I want us to stand right now and celebrate the victory in advance. You have the right to experience the triumph of the church before the chapter is closed. It's been written. They were the owners of Macy's. Their names were Isidore and Ida Strauss. They were raised in the South during the Civil War. Isidore went to New York City and began with his brother, a commercial enterprise selling cookware, crockery. He later became the Macy's Empire. On April 14, 1912, Isidore and his wife, Rosalie, boarded the Titanic. And they sailed from Europe to New York City. Mid-journey, we know the story. The Titanic crashes into a massive iceberg, takes on water. Isidore and Rosalie made it down to where the lifeboats were. And the man managing the people getting on the lifeboats said, Women and children first. Isidore signaled to his wife, Get on the boat. She refused. The man said, well, if she won't get on, she pointed to the husband and said, well, you get on. He refused. Rosalie said this, I will not be separated from my husband. As we have lived, so shall we die together. And instead of taking advantage of the opportunity to save her life, she joined his fate. They said against the massive throngs of people trying to get a spot on a lifeboat, Isidore and Rosalie, some of the richest people on planet Earth, turned their backs on the boats, made their way through the crowd, found a couple of chairs on the deck, peacefully sat down, held each other's hand, until a massive wave washed over them and they were never seen again. Let me tell you, if you feel like a failure, if you feel like a lost cause, if you feel like your life has been one tragic mistake after another, everything can change the minute you connect your fate with his plan. Some people manage to live without him. I don't know how. But if living for God takes me to the brink of death, I will remain connected to Jesus Christ because I'm sure no matter what happens here in this life, when that trumpet sounds, when that great waking up morning comes, I'm going to be part of a pre-announced victory. I'm more than a conqueror. Because when I'm defeated, I'm not really defeated. I just bounce right back. I'm more than a conqueror. Because when the devil says I can't make it, I look in the book and says, the Bible says somebody's going to make it. They're already there. It might as well be me in that crowd. You can't, you can't knock me out. You can't take me down. You can't put me under. You can't kill my faith. You can't kill my hope in God. So I make an invitation. I'm inviting you to connect to a lifelong partner. 
I'm inviting you to connect to the man of sorrows. I'm inviting you to reach out and grip the nail-scarred hand of Jesus. I'm asking you to give up your life and make your life his life. And if you'll do that, no matter what kind of storm rolls over you, no what kind of sickness may not darken your door, no matter how many times the devil barks in your ear, you're never going to be a part of a lost cause if you're a part of his cause. It's already been decreed. We're more than conquerors. Any victory that Rome ever won is nothing by comparison to the victory, the universal triumph of the church. The church. Young person, old person, rich person, poor person. Let your life become one with his. Stand with God and he'll stand with you. And when something tries to separate you, it will not be able. These altars are open. All of our guests and friends, please find a place and join us here. Reconnect.